In this video, I'm going to solve this question. Suppose x has a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square. Let y be an independent random variable taking values minus 1 and 1 with equal probability. Define z equal to x multiplied with y plus x divided by y, which of the following is true. So we are given some information related to two random variables, x and y. The random variable z is some combination of x and y. And in the options, we have to compare the variance of z with sigma square, that is the variance of x. Okay. So first of all, let's see what is the information that's given to us. We are given that x follows normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square. That means the expected value of x is equal to 0 and the variance of x is equal to sigma square. And then we are given that y can take two values minus one and one with equal probability. So the possible values of y, that is small y, are minus one and one, and the corresponding probability is half and half. We are also given that y and x are independent random variable, okay? So this is all that we are given about x and y. Apart from that, we are given that z is equal to x multiplied with y plus x divided by y. And now we have to find the variance of z. Now see, don't try to find the variance of z right away. This is because z has two terms over here. The first term is a multiplication of two random variables. The second term is the ratio of two random variables. If you try to find the variance of z right away, then you will get stuck. So what we are going to do is that first we are going to find a way to simplify the expression that we have for z and then we will try to find the variance of z. Okay. So let's see how can we simplify the expression that we have for z. So there are two terms in z, x, y plus x divided by y. And we are given that y as a random variable can only take two values, minus one and one. So y can be equal to minus 1 or y can be equal to plus 1. Now see, if y is equal to minus 1, then what will be the first term of z? Then the first term of z will be x multiplied with minus 1, that is minus x. And what will be the second term of z? It will be x divided by minus 1. So this is minus x. Now similarly, if y is equal to plus 1, then what will be the first term of z? It will be x multiplied with 1 that is plus x. And what will be the second term of z? It will be x divided by one, that will be plus x. Now see, irrespective of whether y is equal to minus one or plus one, the first term of z is always equal to the second term of z. And see, these are the only two possibilities that we have because y can only take these two values. So from here we get that the first term of z is equal to the second term of z in terms of value. So instead of writing z equal to xy plus x divided by y, I can write that z is equal to xy plus xy. So I'm replacing x divided by y with x multiplied with y because the values of the first term and the second term are going to be same. So instead of second term, which is kind of complicated because it's a ratio of two random variables, I can actually replace it with the multiplication of two random variables. So I can replace x divided by y with x multiplied with y and still my values of z are not going to change. Okay, so this implies that I can write that z is equal to 2xy. And this is the simplification that we have done for z. So instead of working with z equal to this, we are actually going to work with z equal to this. Now that we are done with the simplification, let's find the variance of z. So variance of z is equal to variance of 2xy. Now because 2 is a constant, we can write that this expression is equal to 2 square variance of x multiplied with y and this is equal to 4 times variance of x multiplied with y. Okay, now let's solve this further. So now we have got that variance of z is equal to 4 times variance of x multiplied with y. Now think of x multiplied with y as some random variable. Think of x multiplied with y as r. So how can I write variance of r? Well, variance of r can be written as expected value of r square 
minus expected value of r whole square, right? So using this, I can write that variance of z is equal to 4. And instead of variance of xy, I can write expected value of x square y square because if r is equal to xy then r square is equal to x square y square minus expected value of xy whole square right now recall that we were given in the question that x and y are independent random variables so x and y are independent random variables. This implies that I can write expected value of x multiplied with y is equal to expected value of x multiplied with expected value of y. Now note that y can only take two values with corresponding probability of half each. So minus one half, one half. If you try to find the expected value of y, then this is equal to minus one multiplied with half plus one multiplied with half. So this is minus half plus half equal to zero. So expected value of y is equal to zero. And we are given in the equation that x follows a normal distribution with mean zero. That means the expected value of x is also equal to zero. So this implies that expected value of x multiplied with y is equal to zero multiplied with zero and this is equal to zero. That means this term over here is just zero square. So we can get rid of this term, right? So this implies that variance of z is equal to four times expected value of x square y square. Now because x and y are independent, it can be shown that even x square and y square are going to be independent. And once again, using the law of independence, I can write that this is equal to four multiplied with expected value of x square multiplied with expected value of y square. Okay, now we have to figure out what's expected value of x square and what's expected value of y square. So let's first figure out the expected value of y square. The possible values of y are minus one, one. The corresponding probabilities are half in half. Now if y as a random variable can take the values minus one and one, that means y square as a random variable can take the values minus one square and one square. This is equal to one and this is also equal to one. And now we can easily find the expected value of y square. It will be equal to one multiplied with half. So one multiplied with half plus one multiplied with half. So this implies that expected value of y square is equal to half plus half equal to one. So this is equal to one, okay? So now we get that variance of z is equal to four multiplied with expected value of x square. And now we just have to figure out the expected value of x square. Note that we are given in the question that x follows a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma square. And using the formula that we have for variance, we can write that variance of x is equal to expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square. Now, because we are given that the mean of x is equal to zero, that means this term is zero square. That means there is no need to write this term now. So this implies that variance of x is equal to expected value of x square. And we are given in the question that variance of x is sigma square. So this implies that sigma square is equal to expected value of x square. Okay, so the final expression that we have for variance of z is equal to four multiplied with sigma square. Okay, so the variance of z is four times of variance of x. Now let's take a look at the options. So we got that variance of z is equal to four times of sigma square. That means the right answer is part A, which says that the variance of z is going to be greater than sigma square, which is right because the variance of z is four times of sigma square. Okay, so that's all for this question.